Hey everyone, so in today's video I am super excited because the Sephora savings event is finally here. Pretty sure when I'm posting this all of the tiers are also officially open. So I'm sharing with you all all of my top recommendations. Essentially, I kind of wanted to give you all the building blocks to build like the perfect spring or summer makeup bag. So for every category, I have like my top picks. I'll tell you who they're best geared towards, you know. I'm really, really excited about the picks that I have for this video because they kind of surprised even me. But as a whole, I hope you enjoy it. And today's video is also super kindly sponsored by Sephora. Rouge members, VIBs, and insiders can all shop. Rouge members get 20% off, VIBs get 15% off, and insiders get 10% off. The code is multi-use both in-store and online. And by the way, the Sephora collection is also 30% off. I did do a dedicated video on Sephora collection hidden gems that should have already been posted, so make sure to go check that out. But I will leave a link down below to join the Sephora Beauty Insider program. So if you end up finding the video super helpful, if you enjoy the demos, the swatches, just everything really in depth, you guys know how I do it here, giving this video a thumbs up really helps me know if you guys do plan on making a purchase using any of the links below does help to support my channel so thank you so much to everyone that does that of course no pressure to do that but i did want to thank you guys that do do that we'll have timestamps in case you're looking for specific categories of items to pick up if you have something missing in your bag but i'm gonna go through as i would put on my makeup and then at the very end of the video i'm going to have skincare hair care fragrance, all that good stuff, which make sure you, you check out that because there's a lot there too. Starting off strong with skin prep. So there are a few different looks and ways you can uh, really approach skin prep for a spring and a summer makeup bag. Here are a couple of my recommendations. Both of these products are holy grail items, ones that it, it was like a no-brainer that I would recommend either of these to purchase during the savings event. So number one, a product I already have a backup of. Oh, I also have a backup of the second product I'm going to talk about, but this is a newer launch from 2024 and it is the Ilia, the base face milk. The reason I go back and I've recommended this almost every single video that I have on my channel since the start of the year is that it truly offers a beautiful, lightweight, but bouncy base for makeup. So when you think about summer makeup, you don't want anything too rich and emollient. You don't want your makeup to be slipping all over the place. This texture is so bouncy and luxurious. It is more of this kind of milky essence texture. It imparts a really pretty radiance to the skin, but you're not dealing with something incredibly oily. So you get the radiance and the bounciness and the plumpness to your skin that you might get with a more oily texture, but you manage to get there in a way more lightweight way. Absolutely perfect. I would not change a thing about it. I'm actually considering picking up the mini during the savings event so that I have this to travel with because I don't like the idea of not having this in my makeup bag. I notice a significant difference in the way makeup lies on my face when I have this on. My skin also just feels more resilient. From a pure skincare like standard, these ingredients are excellent. I'd recommend using this within your skincare routine or putting on your sunscreen, letting it set, and then putting a layer of this on right before your foundation. That's actually how I would recommend applying this product as well. Now, if you want a little bit more of a radiance, you want that plump kind of glow, I would say go with the Ilia. But if you want a touch more of a smoothing kind of look, the Vitamin Enriched Face Base from Bobbi Brown, it's a classic for a reason. I would recommend going back to this. Now, the reason I would recommend this over the Ilia is that this does have some silicones in it so it's really going to offer this smoothing effect on the skin 
makeup really applies so beautifully on top of this like this gives the skin just enough slip and moisture it's just a dream the makeup glides right on if you, if you have any textural issues but you also want a product that is going to refresh the skin and make it look you know awake and hydrated and moisturized definitely recommend the face base from bobby brown it's just it's a classic for a reason i've literally used it for like eight years it, it really is a long-standing favorite and i always go back and recommend it this is definitely one of those if you know you know products you can see like the significant difference applying this on under makeup versus not it is a very very good one so i have four different uh foundation tinted moisturizer recommendations for you all Number one, the, and the one that is on my face today, is the Shiseido Revital Essence Skin Glow Foundation. Now, this foundation is actually incredibly similar to the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow. I kind of consider these a little bit interchangeable, if I'm being honest. I think what makes the Shiseido a little bit better is that I think the undertones aren't as drastic so this shade 140 porcelain it's what is on my face today it, it's a really good shade match for me however the hd skin glow from makeup forever i do find that this has a little bit more coverage so i would say the shiseido is like light to medium whereas the hd skin glow is like pretty much a medium coverage so it's just going to depend on what you're looking for but but i would recommend either of these for most skin types I think if you lean combination to oily, I would go with the one from Makeup Forever because it does set down a little bit more. And then I would recommend the Shiseido for those of you with more normal to dry skin. So those are some of the differences, but they are, they feel so, so similar. I wanted to recommend these items for a spring and a summer makeup bag, essentially because they are very pretty long wear foundations that don't feel very heavy on the skin and don't look very heavy on the skin especially in the summer i don't know if you're like this i just don't like for my product to feel very heavy i don't want it to feel like there's makeup sliding all over my face these products work really well with a lot of different textures they're secure, but they also offer a nice luminosity to the skin. So you don't have to compromise between having this nice, healthy glow and also having a secure, more long wear look. If you want even more coverage, like medium to buildable, I would recommend the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I know that the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, when it first released, it had, you know, it gained a lot of traction. A lot of people really loved it. But I just want to circle back and say, I think it deserves even more recognition. I find it to be an absolutely incredible, kind of ridiculous to comprehend formula. It's one of my top recommendations for long wearing, really beautiful summer skin. Here's why. It has a medium buildable coverage, which means you can get a really good amount of coverage immediately, or you could take it and shear it out. So it's really flexible in that way. It's very thin on the skin, so it's not going to feel like a lot of makeup. It has a really nice shade range and it lasts so well on the skin. It has this really beautiful finish. It's a little bit less dewy than the Revita Essence and the Makeup Forever Hydra Skin Glow, but it is more blurring than them. So it has this really perfected kind of finish to it. I really think that it's one of the best formulas out there. You want a long wearing perfected look to your skin, but you also don't want your skin to look flat. You want that touch of a radiance. I really highly suggest that foundation. It is so, so good. And lastly, I wanted to recommend this one it is the Bosma Stick Foundation, and the reason I wanted to recommend this is that it is so quick and it is so easy. It's a natural finish, so it's really going to get along with a lot of people. It's definitely buildable, but I would say it's more light to a medium coverage. It swipes on the skin so effortlessly, and it's just such a consistent, pretty look. It's one of those, you don't even have to think about it, 
kind of products. And what's really nice about a stick foundation like this is that you can spot conceal with it very easily. Really silky, luxurious foundation that doesn't feel like thick, creamy coverage on the skin. So those are my top recommendations as far as foundations for this spring and summer. Now let's talk about concealers, two recommendations. These don't really change if I'm being honest, but these are items that I actually like need to stock up on myself during the savings event. So number one, the Tower 28 Swipe Serum Concealer. Actually, I have three concealers. I have one that's kind of like a hidden treasure that I don't talk about a lot on my channel and I really wanted to make sure to mention it. So I'll talk about the two that you guys probably know and then, then I'll save that last one for last. But anyway, the Tower 28 concealer absolutely blew my mind from like the first time I tried it. It is what is under my eyes today and it really is something that I'm reaching for nearly every single time I do my makeup. I'm serious, you guys. If you typically like my recommendations and you have not tried this yet, all I'm saying is that there is a very good chance that you will be a fan of this. I think this is truly going to work for a lot of people. The reason being is that the texture is very serum-like and thin, so that makes it sit very closely on the skin. And it also doesn't crease super readily under the eyes, which is especially important for me because I don't like to use a lot of powder under my eyes. It, you know, it's an occasional thing for me. So being able to have a concealer that doesn't want to immediately crease, I think is really nice. The fact that it sits so closely on the skin and it also has caffeine, it offers this really pretty kind of diffused look under the eyes. Hollowness under my eyes is like immediately smoothed away. It has enough radiance to it without it being an overly dewy product. The coverage, like a little bit really goes a long way. I still think that it's one of the best makeup items I've ever used, period. And I think the Kosas Revealer Concealer is very similar to the Tower 28, but this one is a little bit creamier. It's going to crease a little bit more readily, but if you have very dry skin, I would recommend the Kosas over the Tower 28 because it's just a little bit richer and it is a little bit more dewy. So I think if you want more of a natural kind of finish, I would go with the Tower 28. If you want to lean more on the dewy, luminous side, a little bit more creaminess, I would go with the Kosas, but the Kosas was one of the first concealers I ever tried that didn't exaggerate the hollows that I have under my eyes. For me, I would much rather the quality of my skin look good and my under eyes not look really sunken than have a ton of coverage because I think the two kind of cancel each other out in my opinion. Like if you have a lot of coverage and yet your eyes look sunken in, then it takes away from the whole effect of wearing concealer in my opinion. So these are my top two recommendations for my hollow under eyed people out there. However, if you want a really excellent concealer for the face, the House Labs Concealer, this is the shade Fair Neutral. Let me just throw it out here for a second. I tried probably four or five different concealers for this giant <laughs> hormonal breakout that I have, nothing wanted to cover it. Everything made it look either dry, more textured, or had too much of a light reflecting quality to it that it made like my eye immediately go to the breakout. The reason this is so good is that it is smoothing, it's hydrating, and it's just very good for a dry breakout. I've also found that in general, like the undertones of House Labs like are, are really nice if you have more neutral skin. And I do have more neut neutral skin. So this is the shade 04 Fair. I'll give you guys a swatch. That's pretty much like my exact shade match. So I think that's definitely part of it. I went out of my way to find this and it, it took it took a bit because it was stuck like all the way up under my seat in my car. And I went out of my way to go retrieve it so that it could be in this video and um, on my face. It's very, very incredible. And before we get into blush and bronzer, in my opinion, every good summer makeup bag needs a really incredible setting spray to make everything last. Actually, I didn't put 
any on today. This is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. And when I tell you that this actually makes your makeup last longer than it would have, I just gotta tell you the proof has been in the pudding when I'm using this. If you deal specifically with transfer issues, this really helps your makeup just last longer. It does not fade as quickly. And, and especially in the summer, I think it's nice to have a product that mattifies the skin a touch without taking away from the overall finish necessarily. Like I think sometimes powders are just another layer of product. It depends. You, you know, with a good powder, it's not gonna do that. I have a couple I'm, I'm about to mention, but if I need my makeup to last and I haven't applied this, I get a little bit anxious just because I know that this just works so well. To quickly mention a couple of powders, you guys, I don't use powder a ton. That I think is probably known by now on my channel. Like I don't powder all over my face every time I do my makeup, but there are two powders that I would highly recommend to you all. The first is the Always an Optimist Setting Powder from Rare Beauty. I think that this is a really good option if you do prefer a loose setting powder. It's very lightweight, it's smoothing, but it's not a dry, cakey look. I like it too because it isn't necessarily a really radiant finish. And I think a more natural finish is what I like to go for with powder because I do like to be able to use a powder to, for example, like set any blemishes or problem spots I have. And sometimes a light reflecting powder, again, brings attention to it and that can kind of be counteractive. So again, it, it's just really important to me for a powder to set everything in place but not compromise the actual texture and look of my skin. The Rare Beauty one is very good at doing that, but if you prefer a pressed powder, I would go with the Kosas Cloud Set. It's absolutely phenomenal. Also, I have a mini version, which is kind of perfect for like throwing something in a bag as like a touch-up product. It's so thin, R even thinner than the Rare Beauty, and very good for, again, setting the face without necessarily it looking like you powdered your face. So if that's what you're looking for, I would go with the Kosas. So feather light on the skin. And some powders that are too feather light are like chalky. It's not chalky at all. It's, it's very, very pretty, super innovative formula. Definitely, definitely recommend that one. But shall we get into blush? So blush was hard <laughs> for me to like narrow everything down, but I'll give you a breakdown on like, each formula so you can really find the perfect formula for you for this spring and summer. So first of all, we're gonna start with what is on my cheeks. Some of you might know, but I have kind of had a love affair with red blush for the past year. I'll talk about the product that started it all in a second, but this is the Flush Balm from Merit in the shade Rouge. And it is what is on my cheeks today. The reason I really enjoy this blush is that it is a very balmy product, but there's a bit of a translucence that shears out over the cheeks really prettily, and then it also sets down. So it's not necessarily an overly dewy product. There's a radiance to it, but I find that this red in particular ends up looking like this kind of I'm at the beach and I have a little bit of a sunburn kind of look. The way it's able to melt into the skin and then not, and you're not really able to see where it starts and stops, makes it just that much more realistic. And in general, I tend to gravitate towards creams in the summer. I imagine that this will probably be one of my most used blushes of this spring and summer. I really like it also because it's a little bit more warm toned, which again, I'm more neutral to warm. So I like to reach for shades like this in particular. It is fantastic. It, I think a lot of you guys know that I've been kind of obsessed, just a, a, a little bit obsessed with red blush. And this is the blush that started it all for me last spring. It's the Dior Rosy Glow Blush in the shade Cherry. It's this really, really beautiful warm cherry shade. It does not look like much in the pan 
And also like the swatches that you'll see, it doesn't, it doesn't really do the product justice. It's one of those items that you just have to apply to the skin to really get the full effect. I find that to also be the case with the coral shade, which is another favorite of mine. Like, look at that. That looks like, like that's not offering much to look at in the pan. What happens though, when these are applied to the cheeks is they really kind of warm up with the skin and offer this extra layer of brightness and dimension to your look. So what I get from the cherry shade is a, I was just out at the beach and I'm sunburnt a little bit. That kind of flush is what I get from the cherry shade. When you're using it with a deft hand, also like you can add it right to this area, the tops of the cheekbones where like the sun would naturally hit like up on the bridge of the nose. You could even add some like to the forehead. Don't know how to explain it, but it really offers such a realistic flush that almost looks like, it, it almost makes it look like you're wearing less makeup because it does truly look like that color from within coming out. It is fantastic. The cherry shade I use, I mean, I'm quite fair. I think that anyone could use it, but if you're a little bit scared about that, but you still want that kind of warmth, I highly recommend the coral shade. The coral shade is really pretty if you have more sallow skin. Like if you just feel like you, you don't understand why your skin doesn't have more warmth and vibrance, this is a very, very good option, especially if, again, in general, you just feel like you can't figure out why your makeup looks overall look flat. This is immediately one of those products that just takes it to this really vibrant, pretty kind of youthful um, place. These really have ended up being like my secret weapon finishing touch to almost every makeup look I've done for like, I don't know, since I've tried them. Very excellent and they're more pricey so I always like to recommend them when you can you know save some money on them but let's say you're like Amanda I don't want a powder blush by the way those do those do last well on the skin but if you don't want a powder blush I also have a couple of options let's say you want a little bit of a creamy kind of dewy cheek look you really want to go like for the glow I think that both of these formulas are so similar. So the Seal Blush and Protect, I have the shade LOD as well as June. Very similar to the shades Spicy from Say and their Dew Blush formula and their shade Poppy. So I'll give you guys swatches. So this is June and LOD from Seal and then this is Spicy and Poppy from Say. So I think let's start with the Say. So the Say Dew Blushes have a little bit more of this creamy gel texture. They apply like so easily, so seamlessly. This is really good beginner friendly makeup. It's definitely no fuss. It's not going to last like all night, but honestly, I don't think that the ones from uh, Seal would either necessarily. You're still gonna get like a decent six hour wear out of them. They have a really pretty, freshness to them. I think the ones from Say are just a little bit more translucent than the ones from Seal. So it just depends on what you're going for. You can definitely build up the pigment with either. The ones from Seal do have uh, SPF 50. So if you like to be able to have that extra boost of SPF in your makeup, obviously don't rely on these for SPF, but that is a bonus of these. But because these do have zinc oxide in them, they're not as translucent. So if you want like a really jelly cheek look, you're probably better off going with the Say. But so yeah, for the more dewy, creamy effect, I would go with either of those. Let's say you still want to work with a creamy liquid texture, but you want it to be more long wearing. That's when I would recommend a stain product like Benetint. You know, you could go with something like the Milk Makeup Jelly Tint, like that's really fun and it is a pretty effect. Like you can absolutely get a pretty cheek look with it. But I think that the Benetint formula is like a cult classic for a reason. It is incredibly watery, but also easy to apply and kind of blends out like that. Like it's so easy. There's that translucence to it. So if you're dealing with really thin textures, so if you have like a thin, 
bronzer and then a thin concealer on. Going with a thinner texture like the Benetton or Cha Cha will really make your entire makeup look look super seamless. So let's go through the same process for bronzers, guys. I have two cream options and I have two powder options and I really have something for everyone as far as what you want from a texture standpoint, from a longevity standpoint, and from just like a finish kind of look. Probably my top recommendation, and you can see why, is the Beautiful Skin Bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. It's a little bit more pricey, so when, so when you can get a little money knocked off, I always like want to remind you all that this is like, this is it. It's one of the best cream bronzers I've ever tried. And the reason I love it is that it's not an overly dewy, creamy emollient bronzer. Listen, bronzers like right next to the hair, I don't want my bronzer to be necessarily sticky or feeling like it's getting all over the place. I really want my bronzer to feel secure no matter the texture that I have going with it. I find that this one is really buildable. It builds on itself very evenly, so you're not left with a really choppy, awkward look. Like there are some bronzers that just look so choppy. Like sometimes they have too much silicone, so the product doesn't even know like where to go on the skin. It doesn't know when it can finally set down and stick. This has such a beautiful formula because it's really smooth and has this beautiful satin finish on the skin but it actually wants to finally set down and give you this really pretty natural look. The shade Fair is also not overly orange whatsoever. It's a very pretty shade. This is one of the best products that Charlotte Tilbury has come out with. I would say if you want to work with something just a little bit creamier that's still going to last on the skin and stick where you put it, the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpting Sticks, are, it's just like, they're so good. The colors are also really, really nice because they're not overly orange. So they're meant to be like something between a sculpting shade and a warmth kind of bronzer shade, which I think ends up just making for good bronzer shades in general. Like, I'm not a huge sculpting kind of person, but the fact that these lean more on the neutral side and they're not overly warm, I think makes for just a really beautiful shade range. So what's really nice about this formula too is that it's really creamy, but there's a lot of pigment to it, so you don't need a lot. And then when you put it, it stays where you put it. So also, I know some people prefer like a stick format, Honestly, you can draw this on the face and still get a really pretty look. I try to advise against that, but like I know that some people do prefer to put on makeup that way. So if you're just like, Amanda, I know I'm not going to apply this cream bronzer because it is in this like compact and you prefer a stick, this is like my top recommendation. If you're asking me for powder recommendations, these are my top two. This is the bronzer that's on my face. Soft Sculpt Bronzer from Makeup by Mario, once again in the shade Light. It is so fine, it is so thin, and it is one of those powders that does not look choppy and chalky. And I think that truly so many brands go over the board when it comes to pigment and bronzers, and it actually can be counterintuitive. Over the years, I've tried so many powder bronzers and I'm just consistently disappointed because so many of them feel like I'm applying like an eyeshadow straight to my cheeks and it ends up giving me a really like muddy kind of effect on my skin. The Makeup by Mario has a great shade range. It's a buildable formula, and in general, it just looks really smooth and thin on the skin. Yeah, one of his best products that he's released, um, if you're gonna go for like sculpting, bronzing, the OG products from Makeup by Mario are hard to beat. I think they're better than like the newer launches in my opinion, and I've tried. I've tried to really enjoy those. Or if you wanna go more luxurious, or you happen to have more of a fair skin tone with like leaning on the light um, pink-ish side, the Gucci bronzer in the fair shade 01 could be a really, really good match for you for a beautiful bronzer. I would say that this has a little bit more pigment than the Makeup by Mario and is, I would say slightly more matte or it might have a similar finish, but because it has more pigment, I just notice it more, you know what I mean? But truly, this is a treasure as far as powders go. 
incredibly silky and smooth on the skin, just a joy to apply. And it is really pretty, you know, for the summer, if you want that like, I just flushed kind of look, that little bit of pink in here will get you there and it is really pretty and fresh. And it lasts, like it lasts really well. So if you're also someone that doesn't like to set your entire face with powder, this will also help everything on your face last longer. That's something that I've noticed with the Gucci bronzer. It's a very good one. And when I want to feel really, really polished, I find myself gravitating towards it because, because I do think that this formula just, the silkiness and the blur of it definitely gives me a polished feel. Now I do have some eye brushes that I'll recommend, but I wanted to recommend this brush just because we're talking about bronzers and blushes. The It Cosmetics Dual Ended Brush. This is like one of those items, like especially if you're gonna be traveling this summer, it's like a do it all kind of brush. It has this fluffier brush at the end that would be perfect for like a one and done eyeshadow or even to conceal. And then you have this really perfect like perfectly sized foundation brush up here. So you could use it to, again, apply foundation all over the face, but I use it to apply blush, bronzer, like to set the face. It's the perfect density. It's like just fluffy enough to be able to diffuse products really well and just dense and soft enough that foundation's a breeze. Like some brands really do it well when it comes to mul like multifunctional products that are actually multifunctional. And I would say that this is such a good investment, especially if you're someone that's like, Amanda, I want one brush that can just do it all. This is a really good option. Because again, you have like an eye brush right at the other end. Now you're not gonna be able to get like a lot of detail with it, but again, I, you know, I used it for like the crease today and had like no issues, so. Okay, so as far as the eyes, we have we have a couple of different routes that we can go here. We can go the palette route, or we can also go for the more like quick one and done kind of look. So let's first just talk about some like single shadows that I highly recommend. First of all, let me give you an idea of like what I typically go for for my eye looks, especially for the spring and the summer. So usually what I'm doing is I am adding a base product, a matte shadow that really lasts. I'm adding that to the crease or even all over the lid to make sure my entire eye look lasts longer. So the first product is that. Secondly, I'll add a really pretty, usually like a wet, wet look eyeshadow on top all over the lid to give me this glisten, to give me a really fresh and pretty look to the eyelids. Like I love something that has this really soft sparkle that looks like your skin is kind of naturally glowing. Like I think that's the beauty of a really well formulated cream eyeshadow or a wet looking sparkle. That glisten, that light reflection quality is something that I really, really love for spring and summer really all, all year round, if I'm being honest. So we have the base, we have the glitter, and then lastly I'll add a matte shadow and do like a soft wing. So first for the matte shadows, I have a couple of options for like a base product. So the Merit Solo shadows are a really, really good option. My personal favorites are, are Vachetta, which is the one that I have on my eyes today. It's a really, really beautiful kind of olive beige shade. It's soft enough to be kind of a soft defining shade into the crease. It's not going to be too, too dramatic. So it kind of makes for a perfect base to go with like a lot of different looks if you have my uh, skin tone. My second favorite is mid-century. Mid-century is just a little bit more saturated and leans a little bit warmer and has a little bit more red to it. I'll give you guys a swatch of mid-century here. You see how it has like a little bit of red to it and Vachetta is way more of like a yellow. So it just depends on what you're looking for. I think both are beautiful and both are shades that I am absolutely utilizing. But what's really beautiful about this formula is that 
you can apply them super quickly but then they set so these are like really perfect especially for long wear makeup if you don't want to worry about your eyeshadow creasing and fading as you go on throughout your day you know especially when you're dealing with like sweat humidity in general these really really will help to lock in your eyeshadow. If you don't want to go with a pot shadow, you can also go with a stick shadow. The Bobbi Brown formula, it, you know, it's a classic for a reason. These are a little bit creamier and a little bit more forgiving. So I would say if you want ultra, ultra longevity, I would go with the Merit. But if you want a little bit more playtime, I would go with the ones from Bobbi Brown. These have these will give you like a little bit more playtime, but again, they're still going to make everything last on the eyes. This is the shade Cinnamon. They're certainly great as a one and done, but again, if we're talking about my, um, my formula here, I'll usually add something like this into the crease before I do anything else. Next up, we'll go in with a sparkly, wet looking eyeshadow on the lids. I always recommend the Moondust line from Urban Decay. This this is no secret. I mean, Space Cowboy is definitely more of a true glitter product, but it's a beautiful wet effect when it's on the eyes and probably one of my most complimented makeup items of all time. If you really enjoy that light reflective quality to your makeup looks, look no further. But if you want something smokier, they also have the shade Lithium, which would easily be a really pretty wet look, smoky eye, like all in one shadow for the summer. I really love both. I couldn't recommend them enough, guys. I recommend them all the time, which is why I'm kind of like breezing through them. But just so you know, like it, it's still something that I love. You could easily use any of the Hourglass Scattered Lights on their own as their own one and dones, but in combination with a, with a matte shadow, this could easily be a super sophisticated, elegant eye look. And the two shades that I love the most are Ray and Smoke. So if you, one of the most pretty products that Hourglass has come out with, other than what is actually on my lips or what was, but we'll talk about this one in a second. The scattered lights read as expensive, sophisticated. So like when they're on the eyes, the shades in combination with that beautiful light reflection quality, just they look really, really beautiful. And I think like, again, there's some makeup items you can't really tell, like if they're more pricey than others, once they're actually on, you can tell these are expensive. Like I look at them and I'm like, that is a really expensive, beautiful, well thought out formula. So they're definitely one I would check out if you haven't already. Now, a product that I love recommending, but unfortunately is being discontinued are the colorful eyeshadows from Sephora. I just wanted to give them a very quick shout out because they really don't have a lot of shades anymore, unfortunately. So that's just kind of like, you know, it happens. But I'll leave up some swatches. Just wanted to let you all know that um, if you can find some of the shades that I like at the 30% off for all uh, beauty insiders, I would highly recommend picking one up because they are very, very good. And lastly, we're talking about the matte wing that I usually get on my eyes. And you know what? I quite honestly am typically using an eyeshadow palette when I want that. So my two most used eyeshadow palettes are the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette and the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. Now I've talked about both of these palettes at length. But if you want the most elegant, well thought out neutral palette and you tend to rely on a palette for neutrals, this palette is incredible. You have the putty textures, like easily you could use all of these putties as that base shadow that I was talking about earlier to make all of your makeup last longer. And you have that base shadow in like pretty much any color you could ever want. So I think that even though it's like an investment item, it will take you the extra mile. You know what I mean? You have a shade and a texture for pretty much every occasion. Because think about it. You've got the putty to work as the base to make everything last longer. You can add a sparkly top coat on and then you can use any of these as a winged liner. This is really like a workhorse product. And that's why I use it so much. And you can kind of tell in here, 
I use it so much because it is so usable. Um, and why buy makeup if you're not gonna get good like use out of it? So anyway, I think that the color story is beautiful. Neutrals, all shades that I would wear. A great black in here, which is also good to have. And I just, I couldn't be happier with it. I think it's, again, one of Danessa Myrick's uh, best launches that she's had. Or you could go with the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. If you also want something all in one, you want matte shades and you want those sparkly top coats. Now you don't have cream like bases in here, which I like to have, but the color story is probably the best color story I've ever seen. And the sparkly top coats are absolutely phenomenal. I think that if you wanted to play with sparkly top coats in general, and you wanted a lot of options, and you wanted mattes that you can use for an everyday look. This just, this has it all. And I don't think that you would feel like there's anything necessarily missing in your, in your collection if you bought this. Like it is a very all-inclusive kind of item, which I think is what makes it worth the money. I do get, again, a lot of use out of it. It's a very, very good one. It's absolutely beautiful. One last recommendation for eyeshadows though. I wanted to quickly mention the Kaja Bentos because, you know, sometimes if you're traveling, you want an all-in-one kind of product and you don't want to bring like a full palette like these. And with some of the specific color stories, you get a matte, a transition, and like a sparkly shadow for all over the lid. So for example, this one in Spiked Ginger, I'm, wear I'm wearing the matte uh, darkest shade as my liner today. This is a really pretty warm toned all in one look, but Chocolate Dahlia is more neutral and I've used this one for so long. It has this beautiful rich brown. You get this pretty transition shade and then on top you get this beautiful sparkly shadow for right on top of the lid. So yeah, Spike Ginger and Chocolate Dahlia are like my two like top recommendations for the perfect kind of all in one product for travel. As far as you know, you're doing a lot of summer traveling. I think that these are really good to have on hand. And to round off the eye category, this is like, this is the dynamic duo. On any given day I'm wearing makeup, I'm curling my eyes with the Shiseido Eyelash Curler. It is flexible. It does not hurt my lashes and it gets all the lashes and keeps them curled all day. You will notice a difference when you graduate to a luxury eyelash curler. I have never looked back. Like I invested in a good luxury eyelash curler before I even thought about purchasing a luxury mascara. And in my opinion, that was the right move, even looking back years, years down the line. And then my top recommendation mascara is the Make Waves from Tower 28. Again, nine times out of 10, this is the mascara that I'm wearing. And since I've been wearing it, I get way more compliments consistently on my lashes because this is just a very wide awake mascara look. There's a ton of length and the volume is buildable. So you can really slowly build up the volume without worrying about getting like a spidery lash look. I think this is perfect for the natural makeup lover that just wants their lashes amped up another step because you can get really natural, but you can also go into the more dramatic realm. It's just a very flexible um, mascara. And I just like that my lashes and my eyes look so framed and wide awake and pretty. Over and over again, I reach for this. Shall we talk about the lips? The lip category is always a, a struggle for me <laughs> because I really enjoy lip products, but I'm not a surprise for a lot of you. The Hourglass Volumizing Glossy Balms, these are amazing. They are so good. Between the colors and the textures, listen, if you really enjoy that juicy lip look, you want that water droplet effect, but you don't want a product that like pulls between the lips and looks really thick and gloopy, but again, you still want that really pretty jelly shine. These are where it's at. It feels balmy and enveloping enough on the lips so that it, this also doesn't feel like a straight lip gloss. You know, lip glosses, 
oftentimes lack like a moisture balminess to them. And this has what I love about a comforting lip balm in a finish that I really love out of like a lip gloss. And the colors are fantastic, so sophisticated. Like they're not those colors that are just like, that's a red, that's a berry, that's a mauve. Like they really have nuance to every single one of them. I think you really couldn't go wrong. They're so good. And as far as like luxury products that I would absolutely splurge on, these are one of them. They are that good. As far as new releases go though, the new Ole Henriksen Pout Preserve is so beautiful. I love this chocolatey shade. Um, if you're a fan of like a chocolate, they also have other shades, but I just find this to give me a lot of nourishment to my lips. Like it just feels very reparative, but I'm also left with this beautiful water droplet high shine finish. Just between how balmy it feels on the lips and how shiny it looks, it ends up just being a lip product that I want to wear and apply over and over again. It's not greasy. It's not thin and slippy. It definitely feels secure on the lips, which is really key for me. I don't like lip products that feel like they're just going to slide right off. But I think equally as pretty are the new House Lab Lip Glazes. These are slightly thinner than the Ole Henriksen, but they come in a doe foot applicator. So if you prefer that application method, you might actually like these more. These are like, I would call them almost like a lip oil. They're like one of the best lip oils that I've ever tried with creamier pigment. So if you're typically someone that wants not just a straight kind of jelly cherry red or jelly cherry pink. And you want something that does read more as like a traditional cream pigment. I would go with the ones from House Labs because they still give me the pretty shine that I'm looking for from a lip oil, but in shades that read more as a traditional kind of lipstick shade, just because of the way they're formulated. Now, as for lipsticks, for matte lipsticks, I gotta hand it to Refai. The lip blushes, they are just that perfect, like everyday lip blurring matte color. Also, these are beautiful on the cheeks too. So if you wanted to throw this in your purse and then apply a little to the cheeks, apply some on the lips, it's one of those products that looks so like they somehow took two seconds on their makeup and yet it looks so pretty. Like, you know those makeup looks? I feel like the Refai lip blurs really feel like that to me. Very effortless, so chic, and I, I just, I love them a lot. And upon further reflection, I actually think that these are better than the new Merit Signature Matte Lips. I think this formula is better. I still think that the Merit Original Signature Lips are stunning. Between the colors and this kind of like satin finish, it just makes for such an easy everyday lip product. And listen, when you wear them for a few hours, they go pretty matte. So they're definitely never going to be as matte as like the lip blurs, but they are such an effortless, don't need to apply even with a mirror kind of lipstick. And lastly, as a little preview to lip SPF, because, you know, spring and summer, really all year round, the lips are so often neglected as far as SPF and the Jack Black lip balm in SPF 25, this is one of the best SPF lip balms that you will find. It comes in a variety of scents. I have the natural mint. I'm telling you, you guys, there are so many bad lip SPFs. There really is. So when I'm telling you this is a good one, you gotta just trust me on this. Most of them taste awful. Most, or they're really like gritty or like white casty. Somehow they managed to create a lip balm that feels good on the lips, is not gritty, and doesn't taste like lip SPF. So highly, highly suggest this one. And Jack Black often does like bundles too. So this comes highly, highly rated by me. And just as a reminder, I typically am using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk liner with most of my lip looks. <laughs> so I'm still using it all the time. It's still a top rack. 
So let's talk about fragrance and then we'll get into skincare and hair care to round up the video. I've been filming for so long. Okay, as far as fragrances go, it's the springtime. I have two that I've been wearing the most and really enjoying for this time of the year, which is Fleur, Not Your Baby. And I'll talk about the next one in a second. So starting off here, this is what I'm wearing today, which is why I wanted to talk about it. So what I love about it is that it, it still has a warmth to it. There's like a bergamot thing going on with it. There's a little bit of vanilla and sandalwood. So it still has warmth to it, but it also is still decidedly floral. It has a powderiness to it. So it's like, they call it mimosa and violet. For me, it's just like a soft, flowery, powdery scent with a base of sandalwood and vanilla so it really balances out i really i typically don't like floral fragrances you guys but this one definitely feels like one that flora would come out with because flora is definitely they do like skin warm fragrances so well so this feels like perfect for folks that want that skin musky vanilla kind of thing that flora is really good at but they want it appropriate for like spring so yeah, this is the one I've been wearing um, and really, really enjoy it. And again, I just have the travel size and I love getting travel size fragrance during the Sephora Savings event because I get to try all the fragrances and I just, I truly, truly enjoy it. Which by the way, Sephora does have their um, favorites set. And if you have been wanting to pick up Missing Person, if you get the Sephora favorites uh, fragrance set, you get to try a bunch of fragrances and then you get a coupon for a full size of your favorite, which Missing Person is available within that. So let's just quickly talk about this. Missing Person has like become my signature fragrance. And the reason I love it is it's that beautiful skin musk, fresh laundry scent. It, for me, it's sexy and like has that skin musk clothing kind of scent, but it's not overdoing it. It's not trying to be something. It just kind of is. It's just that one of those fragrances that feels so effortless and yet has that warmth. Definitely just smells like someone that smells really good naturally rather than someone that has a good fragrance on. So if you like those kind of fragrances, um, I think Missing Person is definitely the way to go. It's fantastic. One more spring fragrance before we talk about a couple more. Burberry Her is always a classic. I'll say this, this is sweeter than Fleur Not Your Baby. So, so if you want a sweet floral, um, it's almost more like in the berry realm, I would go with Burberry Her. And if you want like a sweet floral, leaning more on the musky side, I would go with Not Your Baby. I do think if you lean towards Gourmand, I would go with Burberry. Um, but the reason I love Burberry Her, it's just so good. It has this very like garden vibe. You know, there's that jasmine in here. There's violet, but also it has this sweet berry note to it that just makes it really fun. And it, it's just kind of super flirty. It's a very flirty spring fragrance. It feels like a, like a very sophisticated, fruity floral. And it's so often those can feel like too young. I don't know, like juvenile, but, but this is not at all. And I think it does have a little bit of a musk in it and amber to it. So I think that kind of evens it out as well. Now I gotta shout out Kaoli Pistachio Yum because this was my signature fragrance of last spring and summer. It is so decidedly gourmand and so decidedly sweet, but I gotta tell you, on me, it is like nutty and sweet, a little bit of that cotton candy thing going on, but there's like a juiciness that comes out when I put it on, I think. Like it reminds me of cotton candy grapes. I've mentioned that plenty of times, but if you know that smell, you know what I'm talking about. If you love like marshmallowy fragrances, this one is absolutely for you. This is a fragrance that I will forever associate with 2023 in a very good way. I'll say that. I need to pick up a travel because 
I don't want to be without it. Also, you can see like how much I, I've already used. And this was after I had already used up a travel size last year. But yeah, it's fantastic. And um, this is by far, I think like one of my most complimented fragrances ever. Like every time I'm wearing that, everyone's like, are you wearing Kale Yum? <sighs> Fine, I'm gonna buy it. Also, father figure from Fleur. This honestly is a really nice like fall or spring scent because it is more fig forward. The hype surrounding this one makes complete sense to me. So the base is like patchouli and skin musk and vanilla. So again, you have this base that's like very neutral and sexy, like warm on the skin, but then it has these uh, other notes, like very garden-esque notes, like there's a fresh fig scent. So I think like a juicy kind of fig would be more decidedly sweet, but this is very like green. And honestly, if you want a very unique fragrance that still feels approachable, like this to me has been that fragrance for me. It has a little bit of a jasmine thing going on with it as well. But I think that this one is the greenest out of any of the jasmine fragrances I've talked about. And it definitely has a little bit of a masculine quality that the best way I can describe to it is like, it's masculine without the the edge or the bitterness. It's like cologne light, cologne with that milkiness, cologne with that skin musk vanilla lightness, that like that mix of femininity and masculinity. It's very, very unique and very pretty. And then lastly, the old dead cool taunt. I don't know why I had an English accent there for a second. This is really good for those of you that love skin musk, but you also want like a vanilla sweetness. It's bergamot, amber, vanilla, but there's enough edge to it that this doesn't read as gourmand, which is kind of, I think, what a lot of us look for at a certain point. It's one of those that I can't go wrong with, so I always go back to it. Like, I would say the closest one to Dead Cool Taunt is probably Missing Person, Missing person is way more warm skin musk leaning to like a laundry kind of warm blanket smell. Whereas Dead Cool Taunt definitely has more like notes of vanilla and sandalwood, but still feels like close. Like there's still that warmth, like it's been wearing for a while. So those are all my favorite fragrances that are all available during the Sephora Savings event. I think the Sephora Savings event is kind of a perfect time to try out a new fragrance or stock up on one that you already know you love. And lastly, why do I keep doing an English accent? I've been filming for so long that I think I'm going kind of crazy. Let's go ahead and get into hair and skincare. First, let's talk about hair so I can get this off of my table. The old Dyson Air Wrap, this is still something that I'm using nearly every time I do my hair. It is a blow dryer, it is a round brush, and it does not dry out my hair. I know it's expensive, but it is like it has been worth it to me because even though this isn't like the full strength Dyson um, blow dryer, it gets my hair dry very quickly without stripping it of its life. And then this round brush attachment gets my hair very smooth. I'm pretty sure that you can only use a discount once on Dyson items right now, but I really, really love the air wrap. My sister absolutely adores her Dyson um, hair dryer. And I've honestly, I've used it so many times. I think it's great too. I think both are worth it. I don't know if I necessarily need both, you know what I mean? But highly recommend the Dyson uh, hair dryer as well. And that flyaway attachment, guys, if you deal with significant flyaways, that flyaway attachment is kind of life-changing. It's insane. Like it gets my hair so straight like that. It's kind of insane. Now, let's say I just got out of the shower, my hair is wet and I want to get my hair dry. This is my go-to heat protectant. Any of the dream coats from Color Wow. Now this one's for curly hair which I'm just using this up because I don't have the other one anymore for like medium coarse hair. But this is a perfect product 
to heat protect your hair, to not add a bunch of oil and heavy product to your hair, while also giving you that really gorgeous glassy shine. I don't know how they do it. This is a cult favorite for a reason. And I think there's so many cult favorite hair products that are just like, eh, I don't think that they're worth spending the extra money. I'm kind I'm honestly like skeptical of really expensive hair care items oftentimes because there are ones that are very affordable that, that I love. But this one, I will repurchase over and over and over, especially as someone that doesn't want my hair to be weighed down by a heat protectant, but I also want that really glassy, like shiny look to my hair. This has consistently been the one that I'm using. It's so good. And the mist on here is really fine. I'm not gonna mist it just so I don't get it everywhere, but. But if I've already heat styled my hair, my hair is on like day three, two, whatever. The day Agave Dry Heat and Hold Styling Mist more people need to talk about this. I think one of you guys actually recommended this to me. This is the most lightweight heat protectant mist that doesn't leave my hair feeling crunchy, which that's almost always how heat protectant sprays leave my hair, or it doesn't leave it like oily. So it adds enough moisture that it's not crunchy. And I really don't like a crunchy feel on my hair. Like I like for my hair to feel touchable. So this leaves me with a really touchable feel to my hair while also protecting it up to 450 degrees. But then again, it's not really oily in my hair either, especially like as I go throughout the week, my hair is getting oilier. So I don't want to like add insult to injury if that makes sense. It is really, really good. Definitely worth the money. And then my last hair care favorite is completely gone. So I got to get another one. Listen, there are a lot of dry shampoos on the market. This is absolutely the best I've ever tried. And oftentimes when I go into Sephora, if I'm just like browsing around, I'll go straight over to Living Proof <laughs> Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo and I'm like putting it in my hair. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm good. I just wanted to try this out. I was like, no, Amanda, you've tried it out. <laughs> you know you like it. Listen, it is that good. It's such a fine mist, no white cast doesn't leave my hair with that really crunchy dry shampoo grit, but it adds insane, beautiful volume, immediately makes my hair feel so clean. And it's not like this really straight white kind of dry shampoo that just looks so heavy in the hair and feels really gritty and just looks like you have like paint, like you have spray paint in your hair. I'm just saying, I think it's worth a splurge. Um, especially if you're someone that uses dry shampoo every week and you want it to like actually make the hair feel clean. Again, because of the Sephora Savings event going on, I want to pick up travel sizes of this because I know I'm gonna be traveling this summer and this is like the perfect summer dry shampoo. So yeah, I'm just like keeping that in mind. These are more notes for myself. Um, I like to pick up travel sizes of favorite products so that I can like, you know, travel with them. Travel sizes are also good to trial products too if you don't wanna to commit to the full size, obviously. But I'm fully committed to that one. Now getting into skincare. So they have done such an incredible job. So there's salicylic, glycolic acids, and then niacinamide and zinc PCA. This Essentially, if I have like an ingrown hair, this takes care of it in a couple of days and it's in a roller ball. So it's so easy to just roll it onto the area. There are some skincare products where you're like, I have every intention of using this, but you just don't get to it sometimes. This makes it so easy that I've consistently used it. And I don't like to not have this, especially in the case of like ingrown hair. So if you struggle with that, this is like one of my top tips. Other than like taking warm baths, um, this has truly helped. Nothing else has helped like it. All right, everyone. And that was my Sephora savings event recommendations. I will leave everything that I talked about today down below for you all. Thank you again to Sephora for sponsoring the video. If you guys have questions, please let me know. I will be in the comments and I will help you as much as I can. I so appreciate you guys being here and I'll see you in my next one.